are some of the things that you might do before you get onto the track for your first session. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that our micron or our data logger is fully uh, charged up. The data logger then gives us the times, our RPM and our speed around the track. So just making sure that our, our micron battery is, is fully engaged. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna check our tire pressures. First of all, we wanna make sure that none of them have gone flat. So we're basically pushing on the tire pressure gauge onto the valve. That gives us a reading of the tire pressure. We can start to bleed some air out. It's a nice sunny day today, so we wanna start taking some of that air down. So the higher the air is good for cooler conditions. The hotter the day, we start to lower that tire pressure. So just going around to all four tires. We've got our reading here on our digital tire pressure gauge. So as you're letting out air, I can get 0.1 increments down. When you go to an analog tire pressure gauge, you can't be as precise. So it's still got the dial of going down, but it's not gonna give you the 0.1 to 0.3 increments that you need. Now the other thing is if you wanna get more involved in your tire pressures, you can actually start to lower the rear tires a little bit more in pressure because they're the ones that attract more heat, especially in a go-kart. So you can have the front tires maybe 0.5 PSI more compared to the rear tires. From there, we wanna to start to start our engine. So again, connect up the battery. We've got our black terminal and our red terminal on the battery. On these carts here, we've got a green to go and a red button to stop. So if any kids are you know, unsafe out there or they need to stop the car on the track, the red basically signifies that they can shut the engine down. If you haven't started the engine for the first time, it's very unlikely that it's got enough fuel in the carburetor to start the engine. We'll try and start it just by pressing the green button. Now what that's doing is trying to pump some fuel through to the carburetor as well. So on this particular engine, a Vortex Mini Rock, it's got a little choke. Once you engage that and you pull it up, it's gonna suck more fuel through to the carby and giving it more fuel is gonna start it a lot faster. So again, once you've stopped, press the brake to stop the engine and press the red button that disengages the engine. It's a good idea to warm up your engine for the first time before you go onto the track. So the best way to warm up your engine without actually starting up right in front of you is to give it a little bit on the acceleration. Then with the brake, you can actually ride the brake a little bit. That basically creates a bit more force on the brake and it puts a bit more load through the engine. So it heats it up faster, which is good but it also heats the brakes up. So that first time that you go onto the racetrack, you don't have a cold brake, and then it's gonna be that inconsistency in the brake pedal. And that's basically how you would rev up the brakes and warm them up and warm up the engine. So the next thing is once we've got our engine started, probably a good idea before we start the engine up is to put some chain lube on the chain. So we're going to our rear of our cart, we're gonna to go to our chain, and we're spinning the axle. This has got a clutch so it's nice and easy. So we're just gonna be spraying around the chain and the sprocket area, maybe for around three or four seconds. That gives the chain enough lube that in your session it starts to disperse some of that chain loop, but it keeps you having a nice wearing chain and lasting longer. So as you can see, the fuel's a little bit low in this instance, so we're gonna be placing some more fuel. I'd probably recommend not going right to the top. The reason behind that is when it's too full and you start to corner, the fuel starts to swish around. And if it is too high, the chance that it might come out the top of the lid and start to go onto the driver's legs. We don't want fuel on the race legs, it might burn you. Now some people have the electric pumps, that's probably a lot easier, electric pumps. But in this case, a funnel and just simply just tipping it in should do the job. As we were saying before, especially on a practice day, not overfilling up the tank, is gonna be enough to, uh, to not leak out fill at the top. Screwing the cap back on, and we should be pretty good to go. So these are the things that you should always be doing to start your on-track sessions. From a safety point of view, you know that the cart starts, it stops, it brakes well, and everything's got heat through the engine. 